What's up, investors? Iggy the Investing Iguana here. The Investing Iguana is featured and ranked 8th in the 2023 Influential Tigers by Tiger Brokers, with a total of 410,000 reads. Today we're cracking open the financial books of Delphi Limited to reveal some juicy insights that could seriously boost your investing prowess. You know how sometimes company reports can feel like wading through a sea of numbers and jargon? Well, not on my watch. In this video, I'll be decoding Delphi's financials in a way that even a high school student could understand. We're talking simple analogies and real-world examples to make sense of all those line items. Why should you care? Because having a solid grasp of a company's financials is key to being a smart, savvy investor. It's like having x-ray vision to see the true health and potential of a business. And who doesn't want that superpower? So strap in and get ready to level up your investing game. By the end of this, you'll be able to analyze cash flows, spot growth opportunities, and maybe even impress your friends at parties with your new financial genius. Delphi has had quite a roller coaster ride over the past few years. In 2019, they were killing it with strong net sales growth and a solid gross profit margin of 30.2%. But then, COVID-19 hit in 2020, and like many businesses, Delphi took a big hit. Net sales dropped by 12.6%, and their gross profit margin slipped to 28.6%. However, Delphi proved to be a resilient little chocolate maker. In 2021, they started to bounce back, with net sales increasing by 5.2% and their gross profit margin inching up to 29.5%. And in 2022, they really hit their stride, with net sales surging by 17.9% to surpass even their pre-COVID levels from 2019. Their gross profit margin also improved to a tasty 30.5%. Now, let's talk about EBITDA, which is basically a fancy way of saying earnings before all the boring stuff like taxes and depreciation. In 2019, Delphi's EBITDA was looking pretty sweet at 59.6 million US dollars. But, just like their net sales and gross profit, it took a nosedive in 2020 due to the pandemic, dropping by 26.4%. But fear not, my fellow investors. Delphi's EBITDA made a strong comeback in 2021, increasing by 32.4% to 58.1 million US dollars. And in 2022, they kept the momentum going with an EBITDA of 74.0 million US dollars, a 27.2% increase from the previous year. So, what does all this mean for you as a potential investor? Well, Delphi seems to be a company that can weather the storms and come out stronger on the other side. They've shown impressive growth in recent years, and their financials suggest that they're managing their costs and operations effectively. Slide 1. Let's start with the elephant in the room, that vibrant revenue breakdown chart for 2023. Indonesia takes the lion's share at a whopping 65.6%, suggesting this company has a solid foothold in the Indonesian market. As an analyst, I'm intrigued by their strong regional presence and can't wait to unpack the strategies behind their success. Moving on to the group revenue, EBITDA, and PATME figures, we see an upward trajectory over the past five years. This is music to any investor's ears, as it indicates the company's ability to grow both its top and bottom lines consistently. The 2023 projections look promising too, hinting at continued growth on the horizon. But what really caught my eye was the 2023 share price performance chart. While it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, the overall trend seems to be pointing north. This could signal investor confidence in the company's future prospects, which is always a good sign. Slide 2. Let's start by taking a closer look at the revenue growth. From 2019 to 2023, we can see a steady increase, rising from $440.7 million to a projected $558.2 million. This upward trajectory is a positive sign, indicating that the company is expanding its operations and capturing a larger market share. However, it's not just about the top line. We need to examine the bottom line as well. The net profit attributable to shareholders has also been on an upward trend, growing from $28.5 million in 2019 to a forecasted $46.3 million in 2023. This suggests that the company is effectively managing its costs and maintaining a healthy profit margin. Now, let's shift our focus to the balance sheet. The total assets have been steadily increasing, reaching $420.9 million in 2023. This growth in assets could be a result of reinvesting profits back into the business or acquiring new assets to support future growth plans. 
One metric that caught my eye is the net cash slash debt position. In 2019, the company had a net debt of $0.7 million. However, by 2023, it is projected to have a net cash position of $26.6 million. This transformation from debt to cash is a positive sign, indicating that the company is generating sufficient cash flow to pay off its debts and potentially fund future investments or distribute dividends to shareholders. Overall, the financial performance of this company appears to be quite impressive. With steady revenue growth, increasing profitability, and a strong balance sheet, it could be an attractive investment opportunity for those seeking exposure to this particular industry or sector. Slide 3. The slide we're analyzing showcases some impressive numbers from this organization. Their total revenue for the current fiscal year stands at a staggering $538.2 million, marking a 12.7% increase compared to the previous year. This growth is driven by strong performances in key regional markets like Indonesia, which saw an 11.2% revenue surge, but it's not just the top line that's impressive. The company has maintained a healthy gross profit margin of 28.5%, indicating efficient cost management and operational excellence. Additionally, their EBITDA margin of 13.8% reflects a solid bottom line and profitability. Now, let's take a closer look at the revenue breakdown between their own brands and agency brands. The chart reveals a steady upward trajectory for both segments, with their own brands contributing the lion's share of revenue. This suggests the company has a robust portfolio of successful in-house brands resonating well with consumers. Overall, the financial data paints a picture of a company experiencing robust growth while maintaining a solid financial position. As an investor, these are the kinds of numbers that get me excited about a stock's potential. But of course, we'll need to dive deeper into other factors like valuation, competitive landscape, and future growth prospects before making any investment decisions. Slide 4. Let's dive into Delphi Limited's consolidated income statement for the financial year ended December 2023. This consumer goods company generated revenue of $538 million, a slight increase from the previous year. However, the cost of sales also rose, resulting in a gross profit of $153 million, up from $145 million. Other operating income contributed $4.7 million to profitability. On the expense side, selling, distribution, administrative, and finance costs totaled $90 million, a slight decrease from the prior year. Interestingly, Delphi's share of results from associated companies and joint ventures resulted in a loss of $1 million, compared to a smaller loss the previous year, after accounting for income tax expense. Delphi reported a total profit of $46 million, up from $44 million the previous financial year. This translates to earnings per ordinary share of $0.0757, a modest increase. Overall, Delphi demonstrated steady growth in revenue and profitability. As a leading branded chocolate player in Southeast Asia, the company's focus on sustainability and responsible practices could further strengthen its market position. Investors should keep an eye on Delphi's strategic initiatives and regional expansion plans. Slide 5. Their recent financial statement shows a profit of $46.3 million for the year 2023, a 5.4% increase from the previous year. Not too shabby. What's interesting is their comprehensive income. While their profit grew, they also had some foreign currency translation gains of $2.9 million. However, they took a small hit of $0.7 million on remeasurements of pension obligations. Overall, though, their total comprehensive income landed at a solid $49.1 million for 2023. Now, as investors, we want to see companies effectively reinvesting their profits for future growth. Delphi seems to be doing just that, with a decent return on equity of 19%. They've managed to grow their earnings by 18% over the last five years, outperforming the industry average. While analysts expect their growth to slow down a bit, Delphi's fundamentals look pretty tasty. With a strong brand portfolio, innovative spirit, and a rock-solid balance sheet, they could be well-positioned to tackle upcoming challenges like inflation and supply chain disruptions. Slide 6. From the get-go, we can see Delphi generated a healthy operating cash flow of $74.5 million before changes in working capital. This shows the company's core business operations are churning out solid cash profits. However, there was a net negative impact of $16.6 .6 million from changes in working capital items like inventory and receivables. 
This could indicate some short-term operational hiccups in managing assets and liabilities efficiently. On the investing side, Delphi spent around $24 million purchasing fixed assets and intangibles, suggesting they are reinvesting heavily in long-term growth prospects. For financing activities, they paid out $29 million in dividends, loan repayments, and lease liabilities, a prudent use of cash to reward shareholders while maintaining a disciplined capital structure. Overall, Delphi saw a net decrease of $21.4 million in its cash position for 2023. But with a solid opening cash balance of $76 million, the company seems to have enough liquidity to fund its operations and investments comfortably. As investors, we'll want to monitor Delphi's working capital efficiency and ensure their growth investments translate into higher future cash flows to create sustainable shareholder value. There you have it, folks, the inside scoop on Delphi's finances, broken down into bite-sized chunks that hopefully even your little cousin could understand. We covered a ton of ground, from dissecting that cash flow statement to evaluating their growth prospects. Hopefully it's given you a new lens to analyze companies through and identify potential moneymakers. If you found this insightful, do me a huge favor, smash that like button and subscribe for more investing tips and breakdowns. I'm always on the hunt for new companies to analyze, so drop a comment and let me know what you'd like me to take a look at next. You know the drill, invest wisely, invest with confidence, and may the odds be ever in your favor. This has been Iggy the Investing Iguana, signing off. Until next time, folks.